Welcome to Virtual Rituals Workshop. It is so good to have you all here. We are some of the Circle Sanctuary ministers that do virtual rituals. We keep alive a virtual ritual tradition that's several months old, which is to kindle candles as we join together as a group. I, Selena Fox, kindle my candle in celebration of summer solstice, winter solstice, and solstice eve today. I kindle my candle in celebration of the ability to converge community virtually. I kindle my candle in solidarity with all who are questing for freedom on this day and in the times to come. I kindle this candle for illumination as we share some of our experiences and ideas about virtual rituals. And I invite Sharon to join us in our candle lighting. Sorry about that. I am Reverend Moonfeather or Reverend Sharon, and I kindle my candle in order to connect with all of the co-presenters and ministers I'm fortunate enough to be on this page with and to connect with all the community and the tribe as we all experience this virtual workshop together. Blessed be. Blessed be. And I yeah. invite Reverend Deb to kindle her candle. I kindle this candle for us all to remember that we are beings of energy and love. Today in this place, in this moment, let us be open to the energy of change that's all around us at this time of transition. Remind us of all the gifts that are given to us freely and abundantly by the elements, the sacred earth, our foundation, which is strong and stable sacred air, which brings us wisdom, sacred fire, which brings us passion, and sacred water, which brings us healing in these times of constant change. May we learn and receive what we need today during this workshop. So mote it be. And I invite Reverend Eldridge to kindle a candle in our circle of virtual ritual. I kindle this candle for the magic of pixelation, for the ability of us to connect in new and surprising ways across the ether from heart to heart, from head to heart, from person to person, from community to community. I send blessings out through the ether in the land of pixelation, blessed be. And I invite Reverend River to kindle a candle. This is Reverend River from St. Louis, Missouri, and I will kindle three candles. The candle, first one for community connections. I will kindle the second candle for ritual creativity. And I will kindle the third candle in celebration of our solstice time together and light spreading across the entire world. Blessed be. Blessed be. And I invite Reverend Jeanette, who is our tech person and who will be helping us with Q&A to kindle a candle. Good 
and I kindle this candle to honor and celebrate our solar deities on these days leaning up to the longest day of the year and to honor and bless those forces that allow us to connect virtually through time and space from many different parts of the United States and all over the world. Blessed be. So it is so great to be here with all of you and wherever you might be, if you happen to have a candle in your vicinity, you're welcome to kindle it during this ritual as well. We're going to take a journey into virtual rituals. What are they? How do you do them? What works? What doesn't work so well? Well, let's begin by looking at three basic forms of virtual rituals. Those that are live streamed, it's happening, it's live. Then the pre recorded rituals. And then there's combination. Indeed, at Virtual Pagan Spirit Gathering, you're going to have a chance to connect with each of those types. Let's also take a look at what I call virtual ritual styles. The impromptu, the spontaneous, no advance notice, pop-up rituals. I do some of those on my own Selena Fox Updates Facebook um, page as live streams. Sometimes that is as the spirit moves me, and sometimes it's a, um, a way of letting people know about things that are about to happen. So in a way, it can be like a heralding um, circumstance. In fact, I did a singing bowl this afternoon as we were sorting out tech adventures with Simon J. So that's how I appeared in the schedule with no advance warning. And I do think if you're doing virtual, virtual rituals, even if you're into the pre-recorded or the combo, well-planned out ritual, it's good to also be able to spontaneously make something happen. The other um, big a category of styles is what I call the pre-planned, the pre-scheduled, and the announced. And these can be simple rituals or very complicated ones. And we'll talk more about that later on. Then another thing to look at for your virtual rituals, what kind of platform? How are you sending them out into the universe? Well, of course, there's social media. So we've been doing Facebook live stream, but um, you can do YouTube, you can do Instagram TV. There's a variety of different forms of social media where you can either spontaneously do a ritual or you can share a planned one and one that's already been recorded. And related to that is what I call the video meeting webinar platform. Zoom, we're on Zoom here, and this Zoom meeting is going out via Facebook Live. There's also something called Teams, go to webinar. There's a variety of different types of webinar type technology that gives a lot more options for rituals. Indeed, I've been part of interreligious services that have used some of the webinar type technology. Then we have radio and podcast. Now, we, that's a whole nother category. We're going to focus on the audio and visual together today for virtual rituals. But given the fact that Jeanette and I and um, some others are part of our internet radio network that Circle Sanctuary does, we've been doing podcast rituals now for over seven years. And people have joined audio rituals. Most recently, I've been doing the podcast 
audio and live streaming to my Facebook page. So that's been my latest variety of how to have radio also have video. Then, of course, there are television rituals. And indeed, one of the first types of virtual rituals that I did was back in talk show time when I went on national talk shows. I remember being on a, a Geraldo Rivera show, one of his first shows, and I had been asked to do a ritual on television in front of a live studio audience. Now, I think he really wanted me to do some kind of love spell, but for me, if I'm going to have that kind of platform, I'm going to work on planetary well-being, and that's exactly what ended up happening. So television now has grown and changed a lot. It used to be appointment TV. The show's on, you watch it. Now you can DVR it and you can live stream it on your phone and all variety of things. So television is a really big category that now has diversified. And the final type of platform for virtual rituals is what I call the combo. One or more of these, indeed, some people who do virtual rituals will have them broadcast out in a lot of different ways. When you think about technology, there are choices there too. Do you have a single camera? It's usually a cell phone camera. And do you hold it in your hand, the selfie virtual ritual? Or do you put it on a tripod? That's another way to do it. That's been my method for my pop-up Facebook virtual rituals. Um, you can have multiple cameras at a single location and you can either record from those different location angles and then splice that all together later. Or if you've really got the tech equipment and know-how and personnel, you can have a switching mechanism that takes you from one to another, just like you would looking at a television program that's doing it live from the scene. And then another way of looking at the technology is to have multiple, multiple cameras and forms, and it's all edited and put together ahead of time. The other thing to think about as you think about virtual rituals, well, who are the ritualists? What are the settings? Single person? Are you at one location, multiple locations? Or there are multiple people at a single location? or multiple people at a variety of locations. We've also been experimenting with some of that here at our virtual Pagan Spirit Gathering 2020. It's good to take a look at the roles for virtual rituals. Who's the ritualist or ritualist plural? Who operates the camera? Who operates the sound? Is there a producer? Is there a director? Are there editors that are gonna take this and put it together? and then send it out to the cyberverse? Um, is there gonna be a social media moderator who's gonna look and be able to respond to Q&A? We're gonna try that in this one. How are you publicizing it? And how are you archiving it? Because I do think with virtual rituals, they can have a longer life. And Circle Sanctuary has begun archiving our virtual rituals, some of them up at our YouTube channel. And I've been doing that at the Selena Fox Utah YouTube channel. And of course, there are lots of other roles. Well, in our time together here, we're going to take a look at virtual rituals that celebrate the cycles of sun and seasons, the Sabbaths. We're going to look at virtual rituals that celebrate the cycles of the moon. Indeed, I do a full moon circle by Zoom every month. And we're going to take a look at virtual rituals that connect with the cycles of life and we have River and Eldridge here who have been part of our minister's training program, who have been taking teaching and training to a whole nother level, um, who will also be able to share some of their experiences with ritual through 
the teaching mode. So I'm going to turn this over to Reverend Moonfeather, aka Reverend Sharon, who's also the manager of Pagan Spirit Gathering. And I'm so thankful that in addition to running this whole thing, that she also is able to share some of her teachings and experiences here on this wonderful workshop. Thank you, Selena. As Selena said, my name is Reverend Moonfeather. I am the PSG manager, and I also serve as the events manager for Circle Sanctuary. So we all kind of got thrown into this virtual world back in the spring for all of our festivals um, at Circle. And I am not a tech person. Um, I had never even done so much as load a picture off of my phone onto my computer when I started this a few months ago. And I have studied and studied and I have taken, you know, Zoom classes and, and things like that. So I am by no means an expert. I want to put that out there. But I would like to share with you some of the rabbit holes, I guess I'd call that we found ourselves going down. And if I could talk to you about those a little bit, so maybe I could share you that, uh, spare you that experience, that would be great. Um, first, the first thing that I want to talk about is um, at our Welcome Spring ritual, uh, Festival, we had a, a one day, half day festival for that. And so we had some workshops and, and then we had the ritual at the end of the day. And we tried a combination of, of things like that Selena just talked about. We tried recording some live, we tried pre-recording some, and we tried a YouTube one. And it was just kind of a chance for us to see which one worked best for us. And obviously, um, the YouTube was not the best choice um, for us to be using. And we haven't used that, even though now we do take our, our um, videos and put them over to YouTube. But we don't try and produce a ritual from or a workshop from YouTube um, to go live on our Facebook page. The next second best choice, I think, is the recording. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that pre-recording. And obviously the best for interaction is to do live videos if you can do them. But a lot of that all comes down to what kind of streaming service you have. Um, we found where Selena and I both live out in the middle of the woods and <laughs> neither one of us have really good dependable service. So I am not able to upload really fast. So if you choose that record pre-record, you need to think about that, that it can take hours, literally hours, five, eight hours to upload a simple short video. So make sure you keep that in mind as you're planning your rituals and your workshops and things like that. You know, it's easy to come up with all these wonderful, fantastic ideas that you want to do to pull off that, you, you know, you know, you could do it if you were doing it face to face with people. It's a whole different story when you have to try and do that by recording it because you don't get to interact with the people. You're not getting that energy, that ebb and flow back. And so you don't know if the audience is responding to you, if they're liking what they see or anything like that. So I found that it was really hard for me. I, um, I coordinated our Beltane Festival, which again was like a five or six hour festival. And I also did the ritual for that. And I have to tell you, that was one of the hardest things that I've done as a circle minister was to do that ritual. I feel like I didn't connect. I don't feel it was my best work. Um, I'm not really proud of it. And, but for a first time, I'm okay with it. But I just want you to think about these rituals. That ritual that I did um, for Beltane was a 15 minute ritual when it was all done. And it was pre-recorded, took me hours and hours and hours to upload it to our editor. And I want to give a shout out to Reverend Florence, who edits all of our films together. And then she had about 10 or 12 hours on it. But just for me to make that 15 minute ritual took me 20 hours of recording um, and uploading. And, you know, because you have to watch out for things like the weather, the shading, you know, I, when I had the time to go out and record, the weather wouldn't cooperate with you or something like that. So you need to really, really consider the time that it takes if you're going to do these pre-recordings. Another thing that I learned was, um, and this was about having my script for things. So it didn't look like I was just reading all of the time. So my husband and I actually built this 
arm that went off of our tripod so that I had my script in front of me the whole time for the ritual and everything like that. But then you then you kind of get, because you're not seeing the crowd, you get too much reading versus really putting the energy out there and into a ritual. So it was really, really tough to do that. And also looking down, you know, instead of looking up and looking at the people. So it takes a lot of practice. And I would suggest that you if you are going to look at doing virtual rituals or virtual festivals, it's practice, 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 and know which, um, what works for you and get comfortable in front of the screen. A Couple other things I wanna to touch on before I um, hand it over to anybody else is that um, I want you to, Selena already mentioned a backup plan. Yes, always make sure you have the backup plan, but I also want you to think about what music you may be using because people come up with these ideas of, oh, we're gonna play a singing bowl or we're gonna play a drum or we're gonna chant or I'm gonna play this CD, this song. Well, that doesn't work as easily as it sounds. That is something that you really truly do need to practice, um, especially with all of the lag that goes. And the other thing I wanna bring up about that that a lot of people don't think of is copyright laws. Um, we came into that when it, during the Beltane Festival, we had taken a song that we wanted to have some maypole dancing to and it was one that was, um, there's a site that you can use that are uh, that you're allowed to use. And we had taken it from that, but it sounded too much like an original one. And, and they just stopped our feed. So you wanna make sure that you are not violating any copyright laws with any of the music that you have going up there. Um, also, the other thing is, is that, um, it's nice to have like what we're doing here today where we have so many people involved, but you really do need to make sure you have enough tech people to do that and people that are comfortable. I can't tell you how many hours it's taken to just figure out things like this, but it, it, it the hours and the time. So just really plan, really practice with what technology you, you wanna use and make the best ritual you can and realize we're all just learning. And I think that's all I have to say for right now. I might come back in a little bit later, but thanks for listening to me ramble. And I am going to introduce to you, Reverend Deborah. Hello, thank you for everyone. I'm traveling today. So that's why I'm, I, I'm if you look like I'm in my car, then you're absolutely correct. I am in my car. Um, uh, uh, I was asked to speak today because, um, unfortunately, I have had to do a Zoom ritual. My father had turned. Would you like me to step in while we work out the tech issues? Okay, so I'll go ahead and, and take my turn at the wheel here. Uh, I'm Reverend Eldridge. I'm calling in from College Park, Maryland. I'm part of a Circle Sanctuary's ministry team. And I'm really thankful to have a time to think about the variety of different ways that we can connect uh, virtually. Um, so I'm just gonna give you a, a, a whirlwind I'm a Libra, so I like options. So I wanna give you a bunch of options of things you can do. Um, I'm part of a UU church that is Paint Branch Unitarian Universalist Church here near College Park, Maryland. And one of the things that we've found because of this thing called Zoom bombing where people can interrupt uh, sessions, um, Paint Branch uses a panelist approach and you have the speakers all set up via Zoom. People can come in and watch but then you set the Zoom recording to actually be played on a Facebook Live session. And so then that way people can watch a session. They can either watch the Zoom Live feed or they can watch the Facebook Live feed. And then nobody gets the passcode in to interrupt or to Zoom bomb. So um, as all things, uh, safety first. And uh, that's an important uh, aspect that I've learned from uh, Paint Branch UU Church. 
Um, I'm also part of a community called Stone Circle Wicca. And we came up to our spring gathering and COVID came in and we needed to social distance and we needed to find a way to be together. The hard part for us was doing initiations for a, a whole group. There were eight students that were initiating into the first degree. And so more than just any ritual that was celebratory in nature, it needed to be intimate. It needed to be connecting. It needed to be mystical. And it needed to have great impact and import to the people who were involved. And we thought, well, let's just wait and get together when we could. But the time frame for COVID, we just weren't sure when that would be. So we decided to do that work. And here's a couple things to think about if you are doing more intimate rituals. Um, important, first of all, is the scripting and a practice session. So heavily scripted ahead of time so that everybody knows their roles and parts and to always have um, someone like uh, Reverend Jeanette of making sure that you have somebody who drives the bus, somebody who's a web manager that can talk to people, make sure they get in, make sure that the, um, the technology is, is set. Within that, we were able then to think about things like um, the lighting, like the lighting in here is pr pretty bright right now, but for a mystical setting, we had candlelight, uh, we also had people shrouding themselves, but then that was a normal part to have a veil on. But then there's things like, can they get to their keyboard and who mutes and unmutes people to speak and not speak? And so there were uh, logistics that we worked out in that practice session. So uh, rehearsals and practice sessions are important. But we were able to do that work and people were moved to tears. People were able to have that initiatory experience because of good planning. And so I wanted to offer that as uh, a consideration. And the, the last thing that I'll mention here is more celebratory festival type things. Um, like Circle Sanctuary, um, their Beltane came in the midst of COVID. And I was a part of two communities where we weaved a maypole, wove a maypole uh, in cyberspace. And so the Blue Ridge Beltane community and the Stone Circle Council community came together and we already knew what it was like to be a community, but it was so hard to be together. What we ended up doing was doing a collage on PowerPoint, if that's not a four letter word, but to use PowerPoint and use a photo collage that just streamed through all of the pictures of our community. And so people could see picture after picture and to evoke a sense of nostalgia and memory and intimacy so that they felt this community of things that had happened in the past. And then because of our pagan community uh, powers, we were able to use guided imagery. And so we talked, we used guided imagery to talk about the ribbon that you held and what color it was and what it meant to you to, um, to understand the feeling of the tension of the maypole ribbon and what it meant to be together in community. And we continued with guided imagery and we wove a maypole without a pole, without a ribbon, and connected with each other across the ether uh, in, in a way that was very creative. So uh, I do wanna encourage people to consider, um, there, there's lots of magic out there, but it takes planning and plan is not a four letter word. So I'll pass the ball now uh, back to, uh, to Deborah. Okay, that was actually a really good example of things that happened. I'm pulled over in a car in Tennessee and it's about 90 degrees here and I was sweating, but my phone said internal, I just fried my phone. So it died because it got too hot. So that is a good example of things happen. So I just got my computer out. I don't have a lot of um, power left. So this may die again, but that's a really good example, I think, of looking Zoom rituals, just being open to what happens and doing it. Um, and rolling my, with it. Yep. Exactly. My father passed away. Um, um, he died April 10th. So it was, and I was in Georgia, it was right in the beginning of the COVID-19 scare. 
So people weren't allowed the hospitals. There was no funerals. There were, there were nothing. Um, luckily, I got to actually see my father before he passed. But um, we're the type of family that grieves like wolves. We don't have in and out funerals. We have visitation for three days. Everybody gathers. So the idea of not doing that was horrifying to my family and very difficult. So at first, we weren't going to have anything. We were going to do something later. And then we talked about Zoom, um, the, the funeral home, small town. They'd not done that before, but everybody was open to it. My mother asked me to um, leave the funeral as a gift to my dad because um, I had done, I have done quite a few funerals before. I've done family funerals. Um, like any other funeral or ritual, there were emotions around that. Some people. I had someone surprisingly upset, Selena knows, I called her for advice because I wasn't a Christian minister. Um, in a heated emotional moment, the word antichrist was used. But again, these are all things that are normal just because of funeral and because of grief. And I realized in journaling reflection, a lot of grief was because people didn't get to tell my daddy goodbye. They didn't get to see him. And so there's all this delayed grief that I think comes up on funerals. So we did a Zoom. Um, I'm real familiar with Zoom because of work and because of uh, boards I'm on and Circle Sanctuary. So I was comfortable with it. Um, some things that we did differently. We, um, and this is, and luckily I come from a family and all of you, those who know me have a strong sense of humor. So I come from a family of humor and love. So we practiced with my dad in a coffin. So we moved him around. We looked at visuals. Um, it sounds morbid and other people would probably be horrified. And we swear to this day, he kept moving um, because we would move him over. But we, I mean, we, we got there early and to grieve and we ended up practicing. We moved the camera around and, and did things until it looked good, like a, like a TV show. Um, sounds kind of weird, but it made it more normal for the people who were, who were calling in. So we decided people wanted to see him. I mean, it was an open casket. We didn't want to have a camera just on his face. So we did a, I was on a platform and then he was kind of below and people could kind of see him. Um, I had folks reach out to me later who wanted a, a closer view, which we honored um, at a time like that, but that worked out um, really well. So practicing is a good thing and it's a different, it's a different medium so the visuals and things will be different. Um, and again, we practice. Something else in, in most funerals, and in, in my family, my heritage is uh, actually um, a lot of Catholic and Episcopal. And so their funerals are very formal. Nobody really speaks. Somebody just kind of nods at you and you go up and you say prayers or whatever. But you can't do that on Zoom. So I, I came up with the idea that we would announce people and we would say, um, you know, Sid's granddaughter, Nicole, is going to speak and she's going to say this poem. So not only did it give her time and gave the person who was engineering time to unmute her, it also gave the audience the idea of knowing what's coming next. Because we had printed a brochure, but in a funeral, people also have an order of service and they necessarily won't have that with a Zoom funeral. So that's something else that went really, really well and it went very, very um, smoothly. Um, the other thing that we did is we had a main camera and we chose how to present. We chose gallery view for the beginning, but once the funeral started, we mandated we did speaker view. And then we muted everybody and unmuted. And, and luckily um, my niece who's in getting her doctorate in nursing had a professional Zoom account. So she was able to do that. And so we didn't at some point give people a lot of choices, but we had a we also, in the beginning, I talked about some people wanted to speak. And so I had called on them afterwards and I had, again, announced them so people would know when they were coming next and there were no surprises. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, something we, we learned if I, we were to do it again is um, we had people reach out to say, we're gonna be doing a Zoom, giving us your email so we could get in touch with them. So we had emails. We did not, write down everybody who was in the room. So for example, River may email me and say, I'd like to attend, but there are 10 people in the room of all his family. And so 
it was such an emotional time, like a regular funeral. We realized until later, somebody mentioned, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know you were at my dad's funeral. And so that's something I would recommend. Give people different parts. And one, because um, letters of thank you are part of our tradition in this country. And so that is something that you would need to do. And that's, you usually have a book that you sign and everybody's used to just taking that. And you don't have that with a Zoom funeral. And so assigning someone to write down names so that you know everyone who um, does it. Um, something that was, shout out to Selena, who gave me the suggestion that is very pagan, that my Christian family went wild over, is everybody brought a candle. And I had stories of people rushing out because this is the middle of COVID, everything's closed. I had somebody borrow a candle from a neighbor. I had somebody, a uh, Kroger's was open, trying to find a candle. They loved this idea of everybody had their candle and then we lit it together. That really, and that was pure Selena, that really solidified everybody to being together and they loved it. In fact, they wanna do it now all the time. Um, the other thing, uh, oh, expect change like a regular funeral. Um, ironically, um, my mother up front said, I don't want to speak. I don't want to speak. I don't want the camera on me. I don't want people to see me. I don't want to speak. Okay, we'll honor that. Funeral's over. I'm getting ready to end. My mother pops up. She wants to speak. <laughs> pops up on the funeral, basically shoves me over. They're like, we thought she was going to shove daddy. I mean, she wanted to speak, which was good that she was so comfortable. And, but again, like regular funerals, just ex expect change. And so I just got out of the view so that they could only see her. The other funny story about my mom, the thing that my family and a lot of people missed with Zoom is that you don't have visitation. My mother had visitation. On Zoom, you actually can choose when people come in. So we kind of set up her own camera while me and my sisters were practicing and moving my dad around the cop and do the visuals. My mom was over there talking to everybody across the country that she hadn't seen for years. So I hadn't thought of that before, but you can look at what's a normal pattern and create it virtually. Uh, let me see. Oh, and the other thing that we did is graveside. People can't come with you and they don't have the choice. They're not there. So what we decided to do is we announced we were going graveside as a family and we kept Zoom open so they could leave if they wanted, but they could also stay there and visit and many people gave condolences and we filmed that. So at a later time, we'll be able to give that to my um, mom. The last thing I'll close with in, in, in our family and, and I think in our country, people would like to send flowers. You can say, don't send flowers. People have this need to do something and to send flowers. You cannot send flyers to Zoom. A couple people sent flyers to the home, but what we chose to do is, and I realize now that that's important to help people, is there's, my sister lives in, on a lake in a little town town and um, it's not a very wealthy town and so we decided that people could donate money and we would buy children's books my dad loved ufos and he had all these big interests for the library and people really like that and it made me realize that people need to know and i think that's what i want to leave you with that i learned that it's just it's zoom probably in a year will be just regular for us and so all the components of a regular service we just Need to figure out how to do virtually so and i will tell you it's been a difficult time there are people on this call that i couldn't have gotten through it without it especially selena much love so thank you and now well reverend good i don't know how yeah, to reverend... so i think we'll go to reverend river who will share some virtual ritual input for us. Very good, thank you, Selena. And uh, I wanted to uh, uh, mention that Eldritch, uh, as he pointed out at the beginning of uh, his remarks, uh, and Selena mentioned in the intro, uh, we worked together uh, quite a bit on the uh, Circle Sanctuary Ministry Training Program. And we spent quite a bit of time uh, talking and coordinating and teaching classes to a small group of uh, you know the same same uh, you know, dozen or so folks and we, we, we use zoom and we're, we're kind of familiar with that and one of the one of the things that we do there that uh, is not quite a ritual but it is a mini miniature ritual is we do something called a circle of connection 
And in, in a circle of connection, what we'll do is we'll, we'll take some time to uh, mentally and psychically connect to each other in that particular circle. And then we'll, we'll go through and we'll share opportunities to check in and uh, tell about you know, how we are uh, either personally coming into the circle or how we are as it relates to the topic of the class. And then uh, sometimes we'll teach something in the middle of, of a connection, a circle, and or sometimes we'll just ask an, ask a question and and go through a series of responses. And the way we'll do it is it's facilitated where I would call on uh, an individual person one at a time until everyone gets a chance to speak. And sometimes we shift it around and, and can just let everyone speak uh, whenever they feel moved to speak. So circle of connection as a ritual of speaking and listening, very, very helpful for an educational opportunity. It's good to just get, get acquainted in a group at a distance if you're, if you're not able to be around your community. Um, that's one way. The other thing I think is kind of funny is uh, Eldritch, you gave uh, uh, the advice on how to prepare for rituals. And I know you've done several and, uh, and you said, prepare, practice script. Well, I'm gonna say, prepare and run through, but not script. <laughs> and uh, I had recently an opportunity, and I live in St. Louis, Missouri. We have a large festival uh, in a public park over two days we call St. Louis Pagan Picnic. So sadly, because of the COVID situation, we did not have Pagan Picnic this year, first weekend of June. A lot of sadness around that. Uh, so we did a ritual which would have been like the ritual that would have been at uh, at Pagan Picnic, and uh, uh, and we do uh, rituals that uh, tend to be embodied and ecstatic. A lot of people moving around, dancing, singing together. How the heck do you do that virtually? We tried, and I think we came up with some things that worked. Uh, we began by uh, playing some music. Uh, to warm, warm and gather the folks together. We made a little announcement about, hey, we're gathering and we'll have one more song and then we'll get going. So that's kind of like what Selena was using the singing bowl for at the beginning of uh, this uh, uh, discussion. And, and lots of other things can work for that. Then uh, we invited different people in our community to take the different roles of uh, casting a circle to create the sacred space invoking the, the elements and the directions, each person participating, uh, doing, doing that piece. And we, we let them do it from uh, in their own words, but we had the same uh, a starting sentence and an ending sentence. So we kind of knew how they were, uh, we knew when they were done with what they were doing, which en enabled uh, a smooth transition to the next person who just immediately began to speak whenever they knew uh, they had heard the cue of the end of the last person's invocation. Uh, then as the body of this particular ritual, uh, we did something that we like to do in person, but uh, we weren't sure how it was gonna work. We, we uh, some people do guided meditations, but what we do, we call, uh, we usually call it trance, and it's usually uh, multiple voices. So in this case, we had a drum and we had two individuals doing the voicing. Uh, my friend Jasmine was the priestess for this, and she told the main story, and then I gave uh, uh, additional words, additional things, additional spin to the story she was telling. Meanwhile, we had a drum music playing in the background. Now, tech-wise, we needed to be in the same space, so we had the music playing out of a speaker, and we had Jasmine standing, uh, uh, doing the speaking her part, and we had me standing just behind her speaking my part so that the three vocal streams hit one microphone and went to Zoom uh, and everyone could hear us and there wasn't any lag, but you have to be physically in proximity to each other for that to work. I felt like it was a pretty successful ritual. I think that we, we went deep with the community because we were all sad, sad, sad that we were not together and connected physically, just like the, the whole of our PSG community is feeling that right now. And, um, and it, it, in the end, it was, uh, it was some reflection and it was uh, bringing out uh, the hope for seeds of change that we're gonna plant in the future. And we energized that. And, uh, and that, was the, that was how that ritual flowed. So less, less scripting, 
uh, but definitely the enthusiasm of a live event it was what we chose uh, to connect uh, and uh, instead of something recorded. That being said, I've seen some beautiful rituals that are rendered uh, as recordings that, that, that can be played back. Uh, so uh, I think that's what I've got for right now. Thank you. And one of the things that I had begun doing every month is taking our full moon circle rituals into cyberspace. And we try different things every month. So far, we all have stayed within the Zoom platform. So all the speakers, as well as all the people that want to take part. Now, one of the things that we've learned with Zoom, different accounts have different limits on how many people can be together. So we're about to make the transition within our full moon circle from being able to have some in the Zoom, but also to live stream it on Facebook. And indeed, virtual PSG 2020 has been giving a number of us in our full moon circle lots of experience with this Facebook live stream. So we're, we're going to evolve some things some more. How do we do full moon circles in Zoom boxes? Well, I uh, reach out to some of our core members who have had speaking parts in the past who do music, and I reach out to see who wants to be part of the full moon circle. Each month we have a different theme, and we have had a lot of amazing creativity. Some people bring a poem to read. Some people will sing something, play an instrument, guide a meditation. I look for variety and I look for um, some things that we as a group can do together. So that candle lighting that Reverend Deb talked about, why am I a fan of that? Well, we were lighting candles at our full moon circle before we ever took it online. And it was a tradition. Each of us would say our name and um, check in with our circle as we went around and kindled our candles. And so we have taken that custom into cyberspace. Now, one of the things with Zoom meetings and depending on what kind of technology you're using and what kind of account you have, there may be a limit to how many people will show up on a screen at one time. And I think we've gone up to over 70 people in our Zoom meeting. I have a, an account that allows up to 100 people there. So if you want to see everybody in a Zoom meeting at the Ritual, you also have to be adept at going between the different screens so you can see everyone. I was able to attend Deb's um, father's funeral and I became adept at that technique during the funeral because while I was keeping my attention on Deb, who did an excellent job of facilitation, I also wanted to get a sense of the other people there and how to connect with them. Um, when we are done with our full moon circle on Zoom, I let people know even before we start the ritual and then just as we're ending the ritual that the ritual officially ends, and then if people want to have a social, then we have a chance to chat. Those who want to stay and do a meet and greet, we then can do a social. So we're continuing to evolve that process, and I've gotten a lot of positive feedback because people who are at a distance will be able to join us for full moons now that wouldn't have had we been only doing them in person. So this is now we're going to go into q and I'm going to invite whoever is watching live right now. If you've got a question for us, I invite you to put it in the Facebook live stream chat. And Reverend Jeanette is going to let us know about some questions. And in for about a minute, I'll just go over some what I would call 
recommendations for virtual rituals as she's taking a look and you all are figuring out what you might want to ask us, or maybe you have a, a question, um, a comment, or maybe a resource. So look at your set, whether it's indoors or out, what shows up in the screen, and um, try to have good lighting. And I, um, I try to have side lighting. Backlighting can be a little crazy, but if you get it from the side or up above at an angle, that's good lighting. Be sure to test your sound. In Zoom, there's something called original sound. We're still learning about the audio settings, but it is good to start getting into some of the levels of the settings if you're going to have music as part of it. Um, I have done some interreligious services by Zoom, and during our rehearsals, we've had that original sound piece that we've had to sort out. Um, one of the amazing things that's happened with some Unitarian Universalist uh, congregations has been they've been meeting in person and then live streaming as a matter of course across a lot of different um, different churches across the U.S. and other parts of the world. Well, when COVID hit and the pandemic hit, it was, well, we don't converge in person anymore. We just do it online. And in fact, this Sunday, while virtual PSG is going on, I'm going to do a Sunday service for the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Detroit. So because it's virtual, you can still be part of PSG. And if you want to watch that, you can watch it later because they'll have it live streamed and up on, up on the thing. So check your lighting, check your sound, check your set. And Jeanette has a question for us. And the unmute needs to happen. Ah, uh, need to, need to. <laughs> I'm the person doing the tech, and I always forget to unmute myself. It's just the way I know, right? Um, <laughs> uh, so, Patricia Finkler, who happens to be, hi, Patricia, she's one of the people who is one of our hosts on. Hey, Ganos del Mundo. Hi, Petrusha. Uh, I recognize your name uh, immediately. So she asked, do you have any solutions for Zoom muffling drum sounds? Even if we are in the same room, but there is a drum and voice, it tends to distort and silence it. Mm -hmm. And she said, I had a problem with it in May, and I noticed that this morning it happened a bit with Coyote Run. Well, I will jump in. Let's see, make sure I'm unmuted. Um, we've been experimenting with drums at our full moon circle. And part of what, besides the setting on Zoom, part of it has to do with what microphone you're using. And I know in talking with Reverend Florence, as we were working on Earth Day ritual, which I did an Earth Day ritual pre-recorded in segments up at the stone circle, that um, she let me know that there are some supplemental microphones, they aren't very expensive, that you can get if you're using a camera to do that. So you may want to look into microphone technology. I'll see if any of the rest of you have a suggestion for this um, question. Uh, that's, uh, that's a suggestion that I certainly uh, uh, resonate with, Selena, and uh, Strangely enough, I have it on my agenda to go buy some new microphone technology mm -hmm. today uh, so that I can get better at my virtual uh, teaching, virtual rituals. Thank you for that question. That was a very uh, a good question. Um, do we have some other questions or comments coming in through the feed? Yes, there's another question. Um, and... Kathy Hallgren asked, so even when we're able to meet in person again, whenever that's going to be, it would be nice to continue to include those of us online who can't physically make it. 
She asks, are there plans to keep some portions online? Look at her. <laughs> I think Reverend Eldridge is going to, um, sure. uh, I'll also comment, but go, okay. go forth, Reverend Eldridge. <laughs> okay. Um, I can mention that um, one of the things that we've done is we found a way to position either the laptop or the camera into a portion of the room so that people could participate. So we may have eight people in a room. Now this was pre-COVID, um, but having people that were there in a session that was being videoed and then other people to view it. It takes a little bit of gymnastics. You have to like move the camera around and make sure that people can step in and be seen, but it, it allows people to, to feel a, a sense of connection. And my reply would be that for our full moon circles, we've already had discussions amongst the team of people that have been anchoring our full moon circles about um, trying to set up a way where we could do some of our full moon evening and to live stream it so that there is some part where people could join us. So part of that's going to have to do with Circle Sanctuary, the facility, because we haven't had a large gathering there since February 1st. Um, we uh, did a full moon in March, early March, but we've canceled all our other events and we need to figure out um, the possibilities of opening that facility up and then how we might be able to work with our limited satellite internet to be able to do that. We noticed during the pandemic that some of our reception with that internet there hasn't been what it really needed to be for Zoom. So that means getting a repair person out. So now that there's been some opening up, hopefully we can get that technology sorted out. And I see we're almost at the top of the hour. I, I want to encourage everybody who has been watching live and all of you who are watching um, later that you consider trying out virtual rituals, maybe just with a few people, or perhaps you feel called to do it with a larger group. And when you do that, I would strongly encourage you to record them in some way not only for the historical part of that, because this pandemic time, we are making history. This is the first time humankind worldwide has been hit with something like this. And yes, there was a flu back 100 years ago, but it was only part of the world. So um, essentially, this recorded not only for the history, but for the feedback. So one of the things that I do after I do a virtual ritual is I'll find time to review it, what worked, what facial expressions looked a little odd, um, <laughs> what could be improved, what were the good learnings, what were the things that could be different if you're doing it in a group, being able to give yourself um, some time after the ritual is done to just bliss out on it. But then before you do another one, take a look at it and do some uh, checking with each other. I am so thankful for the opportunity um, for all of us to be here to do some leadership training. And thank you all who've watched live, all of you who are watching later. And we are going to conclude as we hold up our candles. <laughs> and I think we're going to go on gallery view as we all are giving thanks to all of you for joining us in this virtual ritual. Well, it's four o'clock, and so our blessings will be from our heart and with our candles. Thank you all for joining us in this virtual ritual workshop and stay tuned to virtual PSG 2020 for even more convergences of community. Blessed be, happy solstice. Blessed be. Blessed be.